Hello, everybody. Welcome to our couple's review of Pulp by Charles Bukowski, a book we listened to together, and it was lovely just sitting around listening to an audiobook over the speakers. It, it was, was nice. nice actually. It was very nice, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Okay, stop. <laughs> Even though I had to turn it down to a very slow speed that made me feel like I was walking through molasses. It stayed. Oh, it was like. Blah, blah, blah. The other day, Shay was blah. listening. We were in the car, and he put a book on. We were like, "What?" She was like, "What? What is this? I don't understand. <laughs> What's going on? Why have you got it so fast?" So it's not just me. Yeah. You're nuts. Having it on t everything on two speed, it's like racing. Why can't you enjoy it? I am enjoying it. Really? Yeah. But it feels like you can't, you're too impatient to like... I just got other stuff to do. And other things to listen to. I listened to mine on 1.25. And even then, Congratulations. I'm, having, I'm having trouble keeping up with it. <laughs> well, what I wanted to say real quick though too, even though... Somebody wants nothing to do with this. What? Oh. Is right now, um, today we launched um, the End of Everything Indiegogo campaign. And I am like just, I don't even know the word. I feel overwhelmed, overwhelmed with the support that we've got already for it. So um, we're at 10%. Um, didn't think that was going to happen today. But um, we are. And I'll leave the links down below so you could read all about it and find out everything that there is to find out about. But now... By the way, it wasn't that I didn't want anything to do with it. I thought that you were doing a full video about it. And that's why I, I didn't think I should be in that one. Oh, you should be in everything, babe. No. Look at her. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So, I'm a bit grumpy today, guys. March Mystery Madness. This was the read-along that um, apparently not a lot of people wanted to read along with. I don't think you told everybody you weren't organized enough. If you'd said, "By we'll start reading this. <laughs> Why are you looking at it? If you if you Why are you looking at them? You've had this book the whole time. Not everybody can get the book. If you'd said, right, we're going to do it on the... 10th. We'll start reading on the 10th, everybody, so try and get your books by then. I know you were like, oh, they haven't got it instantly, so... No, it was just that I figured we would start on the 1st. Because we got shit to do, right? Yeah, look at us. We're like busy bees. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get all my How... March Mystery Madness stuff done the first two weeks. Yeah, because yeah. we thought your folks no, were coming, which they still before? might. No, I don't think they're going to. Did you tell everybody before the March 1st? Yeah. I did my TBR video. Yeah, but you're not very good at saying we're going to start reading it on the 1st, guys. Hey, is anyone out there married? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying... I know what you're saying, sexy hair. What's going on? <laughs> I think you just, you know, might have left some people behind. I think people genuinely wanted to read well, it. Well, I still think you should. <clears throat> and you told me that yesterday somebody posted asking what Discord was. Yeah, that was six days ago and you didn't answer them. He wanted to read Pulp on Discord. Well, I still think you should. So, if you're watching this, still read it. Discord is like an app where people can converse. You download the app, and basically, if you let us know... Uh, we'll have the group open all yeah, month. Yeah. So, if you, if you read it, and then download the Discord app... I'm just talking like I know what to do with it, and I don't. But basically, he'll... Like, if you tell us your name... On the, your username on Discord. Your username we, and number. And then he will... It's cap I, sensitive, just so you know. Oh, it's cap sensitive, guys. And then, <laughs> and then he will add you to the group, and then we can all talk about it. Right? You look so sunny. Do I? Yeah. You're just glowing. 
I'll put some bronzer on. You think that's what it is? Bronzer, folks. That's I'm the key to a, a man's heart. <laughs> I'm still looking a little bit pasty. Hmm. No. So anyway, pulp. Let's talk about it. Because for the most part, this is the first full Bukowski you've ever read. Which I don't recommend. No. I'm on Rye. I don't know. Did we finish listening to that whole thing? Yeah. I loved it. Okay. I didn't know if we listened to the whole thing or not. Yeah, we listened to the whole thing. Yeah. I can't remember where we were going. Was it not to pick my parents up last year? Might have been. We were doing something. That we, when we were in like the car a... forever. Yeah. So, listening to a book was okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> which is kind of um, touching, because Ham on Rye talks about uh, loosely fictional base of his life. And Pulp is a very fictionalized version of the end of his life. Um, it's full of allegories and fun stuff. The wind is blowing really hard, so I don't know if you guys can hear that, but we can hear it. And it's a little bit... Well, the door's not shut properly again. I'm a little bit grumpy, babe. The Are door you? slammed so many times today because he just refuses to put the latch on. <laughs> Like, to, you know when you open the door and you latch it so it stays open? He just refused to do that, so it just keeps going, SLAM! Out of, out of nowhere. What, what was the noise? SLAM! Oh, wow. It's really it has scary. hands, it comes out, it's all <laughs> jazz hands. Okay, <clears throat> so basically, um, Pulp is a story about, I think how we're going to do this is we'll talk a little bit about it, and if you haven't read it yet, you might want to stop the video. Um, and come back to it. Well, why don't we do um, a general talk and then a spoils General talk, talk is there is a 55-year-old um, private dick in Hollywood named Nicky Blaine. That sounds familiar, What's right? What's it sound like? Mickey Spillane! Oh, my gosh. You're so good. Um, I figured that out myself, guys. Good job. <laughs> and um, he is very self-deprecating and he gets a weird client whose name is Lady Death who wants him to locate someone who might be the writer Celine who should be long dead and if he's really alive is over a hundred years old now. Um, so that's his first case and the person who recommends Lady Death to Belaine is this guy named Barton, who um, really thinks the world of him and hires him also on another case to find the Red Sparrow. And um, there's two other cases that come up through the course of this. One is a guy just who wants to know if his wife's cheating on him. And another one is a guy who wants Blaine to get this space alien broad off his back. Did you mention that? Yeah, I just said Red Sparrow. I wasn't listening. <laughs> I was looking at that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Babe. I'm sorry, I'm worried the pool cover's going <clears> to <throat> It'll be fine. Carry on. Sorry, I'm concentrating. <laughs> <laughs> Hormones. Who'd have them? <laughs> huh? Rather have those than enzymes. Am I right? Oh! Alright. So, pulp. Um, that's, that's where you should stop now, right? So, so what did you think? I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, really liked it. I really, really enjoyed it. I love, um, I have problems with him to a certain extent because he makes me like cringe. Like s some of the things, some of his descriptions and stuff and everything, he's very like, very coarse in his descriptions of certain stuff. And like, I always, I always get a shock when I hear it and I'm like, 
Ugh. Like he's so, I can't describe it. It's like graphic, but not in a, it's just in a very like brutal way, isn't it? It's like straight is it to like the point. Is it like the sexual stuff or is it even like when he's talking about like hemorrhoids or? Everything. He's just so like, but it's not a, a bad thing. That's, that's the difficult way to describe it because Bukowski, the way he describes stuff is like, it's like a punch in the stomach. Like he's just so like, there's no sugar coating around anything. He's just like, boom. But it's funny. And it's really concise and to the point, if you know what I mean. And I love that. There's hey, no, Pooper. Yeah, there's no <laughs> waffing about. He just says it as it is. Mm. And it always gives me shock and makes me, like, uncomfortable. But it not to the point of me not wanting to read it, if you know what I mean. Like, it makes... It's all part of that style, and I appreciate that in it. And I appreciate the way he's able to make it so, so like, funny and disgusting and heartfelt kind of thing. In all it is it. very heartfelt. <clears throat> That's um, one thing that, like, like there's this one scene where um, this guy is trying to shake him down for some money, and um, he has this. Oh, we lost a towel. Because somebody has arms. This guy. Um, well, anyway, so this guy's coming to shake him down with some big brute, and um, there, there's this bird, and the guy told the other guy to go eat the bird, mm -hmm. and, like, the way the character is, like, you wouldn't think that he would, he would freak out about it, yeah. and he totally does, and... Um, I know I'm saying it like it is Bukowski, but if you know any of Bukowski's writing, everything he writes is about him. And all over this book is just allegories of his life and how he feels like everyone's always tried to take advantage of him, but he's kind of been living on luck his whole life. And um, even though times were bad he needed those bad times to be who he was, mm -hmm. you know? And um, <clears throat> even to the point where the book ends, because when he was writing the book, he was like two-thirds of the way through it and then um, found out he had, um, I think it was leukemia, wasn't it? I might be wrong about that. He found out he was dying, basically, and he didn't have much longer to live. And um, he was going through chemo and all this other stuff and didn't think he was going to write it. And then, um, like a lot of people who end up with um, cancer like that, when you go into remission, there's this period where you do feel really good, even if it's right before you die, you know? And... Um, there was a short period where he felt good and he knew that he had to finish the book or else the book would never get done. Mm -hmm. Like, he had a window of opportunity to do it. <clears throat> and so he did it, and then apparently he sent it off to John Martin at Black Sparrow Press, um, who was his publisher, and he apparently um, rewrote the whole thing after he sent it to him. Um, trying to fix plot holes that he thought he had. Because normally, the way he writes, he just writes. And he never tried to plot or pace anything. And so this was like a very large experiment for him to try to figure out how to do that stuff. And then, like, <clears throat> the dedication, it's like dedicated to bad writing like it's just like he knew what he was doing even though he had no idea how to do it you know what i'm saying 
Um, it's just got, it's just such a, like a natural. And I think at what speed were we listening to it? Or? We were at one point two five. Okay. Because I was just going to say, I think listening to it as well as reading it, like I should try reading it physically to see mm -hmm. what it's like. But listening to it is an experience in itself because it's written in the style of like your private dick where you go to the office, the PI and you, is it PI? Yeah. And you go and you sort of, you know, a lot of noir movies and stuff have that um, narration over the story. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that sort of, when you're listening to it on aud like an audio book, it's like you're listening to the narrator from the film telling yeah. you the whole thing. So it really adds to and the style of it. Christian Baskis, whose name I think I said correctly, does such an amazing job with all the characters in it. He does. Like, all, all of, of the... the characters are different. And he goes, I don't know, I don't know. Like, uh, and all the different, like... Um, Do you want me to cook the bird first before I eat it? <laughs> no, I just want you to put the bird down. I do not want you to eat the bird anymore. It's, and it's really good. It's just, it's so good. But, like, back to the narration. And that's why I like listening to it fast, because I like old, quick dialogue and, like, quick wit. And it's like, he's like, um, my eyes were blue and nobody loves me. But I was the best dick in L.A. You know, like, it's just, like, the ridiculous... It's so, like... It's if you so are fast. a fan of hard-boiled fiction, detective fiction and stuff, and you've read Raymond Chandler's Philip Marlowe, and you've read um, The Continental Op or Sam Spade or Mike Hammer... Um, from Mickey Spillane and stuff like that. It's completely in that style, but with more humor to it. Yeah. And more heart to it in a lot of ways because he's very, he's so self-deprecating yeah. about himself. Like one of the coolest, not coolest, but like funniest shticks in the whole thing is every time he goes into a bar, the bartenders give him shit. And all he wants to do is just sit and have a drink. And, um, he goes into this one bar and he's like, I'll have two Chinese beers. And they're like, are you waiting for somebody? And he's like, no, they're both for me. Well, why don't you just order one? And then when you're done with that one, order another one. He's like, cause I want to do it this way. Well, that's weird. Well, what you weird? <laughs> this guy's nuts. And he's like, well, if you have, if you have one and then keep the other one for later, then the second one's going to be cold. And he's like, not cold, warm. The no, if will... she... Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? If she gives it, like, gives it to him when he actually And, and so he's it. all pissed off, and he's like, I'll have three Chinese beers Just right now at the table. Off, I'm gonna, and you can sit and watch me drink all three of them. <laughs> but it's just like, every place he goes into, everyone's a fucking asshole to just him. Just giving him shit for the sake of oh, it. Oh, it's so funny. It's just like... And it's it's not like... I've had that same exact thing happen to me when I ordered three Chinese beers. Um, so you could have shut the door at any time. I shouldn't have to, because you were the one who came in. Um, so anyway, it's just, it's really clever the way it's done. The mysteries, um, probably as far as like March Mystery Madness go, aren't... I don't think they're going to be as satisfying as everyone would want them to be. Like, I mean, three of the four cases, actually all four cases get solved, but the way he solves the last case, it shocked you. It shocked me the first time I read it. I, I was almost, it almost did me in, you know? Like, it's really heartfelt. You know? <laughs> I'm gonna have to do it. really pissing me off. Sorry. Hey, babe, where are you going? <laughs> Something oh my tells God. me my wife's a little upset. Wow. With intuition like that. I should be the world's greatest dick. Yeah. Oh, I am, huh? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so... 
I don't know, I find it like a pleasure. Like I always am a little bit nervous and I think, is it going to be like, because I haven't read any of his poetry yet, have I, or anything like. And you also haven't read his short stories. And his short stories, because those were written for the Free Press or Open City or Hustler or things like that, some of them are, like, really hard to listen to. Mm -hmm. And they're not... They're not written as well, but they are very exploitive. But still in his style. You know? Mm. And I think those would send you over the edge. It's not that I'm prudish or anything. It's just like I find like just like descriptions t to shock you for the sake of shocking you kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like I I don't it takes me out of the story a little bit. You know what I yeah. mean? Like I don't want to feel uncomfortable and like ugh. But, like, there's certain things, like, that you've told me about that's disgusting, but it's hilarious as well. Like Oh, like that one poem that, <laughs> that we keep bringing up? Yeah. Oh, my God. Should I talk about it? I guess. There's this one poem where um, he's talking about his wife, and this is later on in life, and how she just, like, follows him around and, like, tells him off for shit. And he's like, I was in the bathroom brushing my teeth, and my wife comes in, and she's like, pee, there's pee on the floor around the toilet. You're not pissing in the toilet right. What's wrong with you? You're a grown man. Da -da 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 -da. And he's like, Ugh. and then she's like, you know, I just washed these sheets. And you see that? See that brown? That's poo. Do you not know how to wipe? And he's like, oh, God, oh, I wipe just fine. What about that peanut we found in your butt crack? And he's like, I told you how that got there. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> it's just it's so, so like, hysterical. It is like, hysterical, but I, I'm trying to think of the word to describe it. It's like, I can't put my finger on it. It's not like explicit. It's not like... Is it the same kind of thing like when we watch the Inbetweeners and he's doing the walk on the runway and his balls hanging out of the Yeah, thong. it's just like, it's like, but that's, that's funny. Like, this... But you, you're like... No, but it's <laughs> funny. I'm not like, oh God, like I can't... It's cringy. <coughs> but it's funny cringy. But it's like, when it's like, just straight described to you with no frills, nothing. It's just like, like the peanut in your butt crack. There's like... <laughs> I like can't it, stop laughing no, about that. No, it's hilarious. That. Like I like and we he's both just laugh like, for ages, and he's like, oh, I "Told you how that got there." And then it like changes the subject. The fact that it, he says, "I told you how that got there," the and then never that, went back to no, it. And the fact they've had that conversation. <laughs> for those of you who want to know where that is, it's in um, Bone Palace Ballet. So um, it's a poetry collection. Um, but it came out after he died, but it's that one's great. It's hilarious, but he does that. Like, what was it that we were listening to? Was it Hamon Rye when he was in the hospital getting all his like acne lanced? Yeah, that was awful. But see, that's the difference between his novels and his short stories because his novels, there is heart, there is um, emotion. In there, Very much so. You know? They're so touching, but like all in his style. Yeah. But like you're laughing, but you're like, oh my god, that's awful. You know, it's really like tragic. A lot of the story in it is tragedy, you know. Yeah. But the way he sees life and the way he describes it is is just his own unique voice. You don't hear that often, and it's special for that. But I'm saying, I just think it's it's not. It's not so much the graphicness or anything that, but like the sex descriptions and stuff. There's no like. But in pulp, there isn't really any sex. Like he. No, there's the odd bit. Like there's the odd descriptions of of things. Yeah. And like. There's the guy having sex with the. Oh. <laughs> that's that's funny as well. That's hilarious. But that's that's what I'm saying. Like it's not it's not so much that. It's not that it's a 
bit of prudy thing. It's just, I'm trying to describe this for people who might be thinking, oh, I don't know. You know what I mean? Because that... Like, a lot of people think Bukowski is, like, just a total woman hater and, like, like a, a womanizing, person. sexist pig. And kind of the thing is, though, in all of his writing, you will always find, no matter what the dialogue says in his narration of everything, you know that he thinks he's like a piece of shit at the bottom of a totem pole and all these women are above him. And he treats men way worse than he treats women in the books and in his stories even. Yeah. But it's like... Um, it's just his description. It's a lot of machismo. Yeah. Like in the dialogue. Yeah. Like he wants... He wants to be the hero of the story inside the story, and he wants everyone in the story to know that. But at the same time, he's like basically he's a small child. He's describing himself as a fat piece of shit. Yeah. You know. Who doesn't deserve who anything. Who doesn't deserve anything good. It's really interesting. Like, and I think if if you initially read it, and you might think, oh, this isn't for me, I think you should you read... I think maybe this and Ham on Rye are the kind of... The thing about Ham on Ride that's different from everything else is that there, a lot of the humor in his writing is gone in Ham on Rye because the majority of that time in his life, because that goes from like his first memory as a child up to college to the bombing of Pearl Harbor. And his humor is what makes all the horrible things he talks about good or fun, but in Ham on Rye, there really isn't a lot of humor. There is some, but it is really sparse, so it makes everything in that book really strong and really heavy. I didn't find it like that, though. But you haven't read, like, no, I haven't Post got, Office or Women. No, or I haven't got like anything to, to compare it to, but both of those I enjoyed, really enjoyed, and I don't have any experience, really, with the other stuff. And I know that sounds like a bad thing, but I'm just saying for people who might be worried about it, I'm kind of, um, like, I can see I would have been put, like, if you hadn't read all the stuff you've read and, and just introduced me to it gently, Yeah. I wouldn't have touched it because I would have thought, oh, this is going to be gross. I'm not going to want to read this. Yeah. And I'm so glad I have because it's, he's, he's beautiful in a lot of his, writing it's, yeah. it but it's so funny and clever like you know, if you I, if you want to read his short stories i would say start with hot water music because he wrote that a little later in life and it's not as um gosh am i gonna regret saying this or it's be. different from like notes of a dirty old man or um, Tales of Ordinary Madness, or The Most Beautiful Woman in Town. Um, it's... There's one story called The Fiend that is a really... It's probably, like, the worst story. Like, not worse as so in... So why have you put Charles in that one? No, I'm trying to... I, I think that's in um, South of No North. I think. I hope it's not in hot water music, but if it is and you're a little squeamish, I'd say skip that one. But the rest of it's solid. Um. See, as a comparison, I used to read, um, I watched Train Spotting, mm -hmm. like, when's that in the 90s? Yeah. But my brother was really into Irvin Welsh. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I read quite a few of his novels, and they're pretty like it's like the same kind of similar well no, not it's not similar at all but the same kind of graphicness in a story and just like basic sort of what else did he write i can't remember any of the names i can see the covers because yeah. they're like really like contrasting bright colors there's one like with a purple head and face with a yellow background Ooh, i like that it's okay. No, no worries. I can't remember, but the, I read a, a number of them. Like, Train Spotting, like, it starts off with him climbing out of a 
or climbing into a sh- like shit filled toilet yeah because his suppositories cut, came out didn't he, he had yeah. diarrhea in the toilet so it's that kind of like sort of punch in the gut descriptions of stuff but without any of the humor there's n- i think there actually there is there's a little bit of that i can see he might have been influenced by bukowski on that kind of writing i feel like he's like more... hunter s thompson and stuff but yeah you know what I mean? I feel like it's that kind of, but because it's like Edinburgh and it's like a really sort of gritty working class, it it's like sort of depressing. And re- But some of his stories are like, there's one in, set in Florida or somewhere as well, as far as I can remember, and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, it hasn't got that self-deprecating um, warmness underneath it all. Yeah. Like, I'm fond of him. Yeah. I feel like, fond I of him feel and attached to him. Like, I... Even though he's gross and he does disgusting things and he says bad stuff. Yeah. Like, I still feel attached to him. Like, I want him to be okay. Yeah. And I don't feel like that in any of, like, the train spotting ones and stuff like that. No, like, not I, at all. You don't feel attached to and the you, characters. Like, even as much as, like, I love Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, you don't have that... Like a sympathy or an empathy. Yeah. Like, I don't feel like Hunter S. Thompson is my friend. I feel like Bukowski is, like, a friend. You know, like I know, someone I have to I take care of. I know, that's how I feel about it. It's really weird. Like, I feel like he's he's the kind of guy who I would love to go up and just, and like, give him a cuddle and he'd be like, fuck off. You know what I mean? And he'd be, he'd be trying to push me away, but secretly he'd like it. Yeah. He feels like that kind of person. Like, yeah. I would cuddle him, even though he'd be like a grumpy granddad who'd be like, I don't need cuddles, get them, you know what I mean? That like bristly kind of personality, but actually he's like, that was really nice. Yeah. That's how I feel about him. Yeah. I don't know if that's like, makes sense to anybody, but it's... I'm glad you do, because that's how I feel about it. Yeah. Like he offends me, not in a bad way, but he, like, for like, I can't describe how how I feel about it. It's like... He says bad stuff that makes me go, ugh, and like, oh, God, oh, you know, and like, be worried about the next sentence, but mm-hmm. then he pulls me back in again straight away, yeah. and I feel like that's a good way to feel sometimes. Like, I don't want to always read a book that I feel safe. Yeah. Well, so I would say if you want to read his poetry, um, Love is a Dog from Hell is probably his most famous book. Um, or The Last Night of the Earth Poems. That's amazing. Um, Post Office was the first book of his I read. And I think that's... I'd like to read that next, if we could listen to that. Yeah. I like, I oh, love... my God, I would love to. It's really nice at night time just sitting listening to it, isn't yeah. it? Like, while I'm sewing or fiddling about making something, it's it's just nice to listen to. And it's funny, you're laughing along to stuff. But I think people, sure. like, especially coming back to Pulp, for the mystery madness thing, it's such like anybody who likes any kind of hard boiled stories, it's kind of it's if you're a fan of hard boiled fiction, you can't love... you can't listen to this and not be like, Oh, oh Yeah. Oh But I find it really accessible. <laughs> you know what I mean? I f- I found I, this that style of things, you know, like What's the Steve Martin one? Gentlemen don't wear plaid. Oh, dead men. Dead men, not gentlemen. Oh dead my God, I would thought of that in forever. Yeah. Oh. That always like, that kind of style of things with the sort of the... Oh my wash. gosh. Yeah, we should watch that. I haven't thought of that movie in like no, forever. No, it's awesome. Did you watch um, Curse of the Jade Scorpion, the Woody Allen no, hard-boiled? No, we should watch that as well. It's okay, like, it's I just okay. find I it really like it. all That style of things instantly draws me in, you know, with the jaded P.I. He was just like, and he's always like oh, drinking classic. and smoking. And, you know, the lines of the the slats of the Venetian. The blinds. Yeah, yeah, the blinds on the... Oh, know, my God. It's just really accessible to me. And that's like, I don't know, this is a, an... It's not a long story, is it? It's no. like, how many hours? I think it's six. It's like six hours audible, but it's not like... We a... were speeding it up, so I don't know exactly. Yeah, but it's... It might be a little bit longer. 
but it's really easy to read and it's a real like pleasure and say. yeah and the the narrator he narrates all the novels that he's are available so on audible it's funny yeah he's great um but anyway so anyway i hope you guys liked it um let me know down in the comments below what you thought about it and um we could chat more about it there yeah, join the Discord thing and we can talk about yeah, it. Yeah, let me know. And check out Matt's campaign. Oh, please. what campaign? This campaign? <laughs> I know we're, we're pimping it out, mm. but it's really special and it's, re it's really hard for him to have written all this stuff. It doesn't find it easy at all. Look at his face. I'm a such psycho. A, you're such a nightmare, but it's... I think it's genuinely. People have the been best. saying such nice things to me. And he's today. in a flap. He's like sweating. I don't know he what to know. do. I I was trying to like write thank you notes to people, and he's I was hopeless. like, <laughs> he doesn't know what to write. It's not because he doesn't feel it. It's just yeah. he feels like he doesn't deserve it. It's like a weird. I'm a writer who can't find the words. Wow. <laughs> but it's really. I'm so proud of him for putting it out because this isn't. It's not like. <laughs> It's not like in your comfort zone at all, is it? Um, uh, so just go and have a look, please. You don't have to do anything. Just have a look and share it. Not in her comfort zone either. No, it's not. I'm really bad at it. We had a talk before I hit record. That she has obviously forgotten. So yeah, one let's point not... for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.